Hello and welcome to Bajaj's Test Track. We are here to review the newly updated NS twins, the NS160 and the NS200. Now, given that Bajaj already have a line of sports derived bikes, namely the N, the N160 and the N250, is there a point in the NS being launched and is it even a good idea for Bajaj to launch the NS twins? Let's find out all about it today. I've ridden the F250 and the N250 over here at the Chakans test track. So, well, those bikes were quite good when it comes to handling and obviously very, very comfortable. But like I've said in that video, if you wanted something that's more sharp and agile and has an edge over the F250 and the N250, then the NS200 is the pick for you. Now, over here, we have the 2023 NS200 and the NS160 and they have got some major upgrades to make it even more faster, sharper and also even more flickable and aggressive. Well, other than the paint scheme, all the major upgrades are in the front end of the motorcycle. So, if you look at it closely, the front disc is now 300mm. That's 40mm bigger than the previous generation of the NS160 uh, and the 200. It has got uh, newer uh, brake calipers and the braking equipment from Grimeca, dual channel ABS and also brand new USD forks from Endurance especially for the NS. So now like I've said earlier itself that uh, this bike was way sharper and uh, you know way easier to flick around than the N160, N250 and F250. Uh, this will make sure that it is even more sharper than the previous generation and the front end is also a lot more rigid the way you can just tip into a corner and just carve through it is just crazy for a 200cc motorcycle especially being a naked bike so this is what gets the fun factor back in the pulsar and well if you are planning to go around canyon craving you're gonna have a lot of fun with these provided you have even better tires now when you sit on the bike you'll realize that the ergonomics are quite similar to the older generation of the NS 160 and the 200 the foot peg is adequately set not too high in the back not too front the handlebar is also perfectly angled it's not too low not too high and also slightly aggressive so even if you want to tuck in and go that is possible the major improvement over here is the front feel now because of this USDs well it feels quite solid and quite stable so you know that whatever happens the response will be immediate and you can react to it and you know just basically attack any kind of corner you're thrown into well the engine is almost the same as the previous generation of the ns200 but the torque is uh, mapped at such that it's available post 5000 rpm now compared to the n250 and the f250 which had a lot of usable torque but it lacked on well the horsepower the number of rpms to play around with and also the gears to play around with now that was a commuter bike which is supposed to be fun and comfortable this is an all-out enthusiastic bike so now if you're looking for something uh, to start off with to go fast learn fast and also have some fun with it now also this is the number one choice for most of the stunters in the country so that says a lot if not so overall a very good engine the clutch is light it's quite smooth the throttle response is crisp and if you pop the clutch and throttle it right you can carry wheelies for days so that's about it the same engine we loved it we never hated it and it's still good a similar story can be said about the NS162. Nothing in the engine department has really changed. Most of the power can be felt in the top end and both the motorcycles retain the triple spark system that the Pulsar was known for, whereas the N160 and N250 get a dual spark setup. Now you must be wondering why there are so many Pulsar siblings. I mean, you've got the N, you've got the P, you've got the RS, you've got the F, you've got the original 150 and you've got the NS. So what does it all mean? The original 150 has been always on sale just because of the demand, so has the 220F. The P is basically meant for the commuter, for the one who wants to take his kids to school, his wife to the shops and basically commute with the bike super calmly, super easy. The N is slightly more sporty, like the M340i of the bike industry if you will. It's for the kind of person who still needs to go to the office but wants to go and have a little bit of fun with it. The NS 
is the balls to the wall bike for Pajaj at least. It is the bike that is meant for you to take to the canyons on the weekend. The one with the upside down forks, dual channel ABS as standard, bigger brakes and a much better riding dynamic. When it comes to similarities, both the bikes are pretty identical in terms of features. You get dual channel ABS, 300mm fronts, 230mm rears, upside down forks in the front and a monoshock in the rear. When it comes to differences, you do have quite a few like this is a six speed gearbox in the NS200 with, an, uh, with a liquid cooled engine and the NS160 has an oil cooled engine and a five speed gearbox and also the NS160 is of course priced cheaper at 1,34,000 rupees X showroom and the NS200 is priced at 1,47,000 rupees X showroom. The looks of the NS haven't really changed apart from the livery on the motorcycle. Now you get the NS in two different colors, pearl metallic white and ebony black. If you ask me, I would definitely go for the ebony black because the bike looks super stealthy and I love the dark chrome stickering. The bike does look a tiny bit different to the older gen because of the beefier USDs up front. Yes, some areas are a little dated now, for example the instrument cluster which in my opinion needs a little overhaul and needs some features like Bluetooth connectivity. But as a motorcycle, the NS has just gotten a lot better. The USDs make a world of a difference while riding but it's not at the compromise of comfort. It is still a pulsar underneath so the seats are comfortable, it still gives decent fuel economy and it will be reasonable to maintain too. Now after a fully extensive day at the Bajaj track, we can confidently say that the NS Twins are back. And all that is left to see is how do they fare with these USPs like USDs. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? Now, how do these compare in the Indian market and abroad? Well, that's what we're going to have to find out in the coming days. It's been your boy Bhavni Baswani. That boy is Kiran Rao and you're watching The Driver's Hub. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next one.